you filming filming it already? Yeah. It's like it's organic, yeah. So, um... It's my start already with this movie. <laughs> but it's, um... Because I didn't want Action. it to be, like... Like, nah, character. Nah, you know, smart. I just wanted like it this. to be... I like this. Be real and real. So you were serious about that raw shit? Nah, no, please. and also, like, I am, I'm, I'm not out there to, like, sabotage or expose. I just mm. want, like, organic real because I've been doing the very constructed, very orderly and live for mm. very long. And I yes, think that yeah. the market just wants to see the other side to people, man. The the, the relatable, raw, yeah. honest, sincere. And the funny thing is that when, like when they do it in the States, we'll watch that. Yes. And we'll be intrigued by the yes. like, oh, I can't believe they got Snoop Dogg lambing here to smoke in a joint talking back with us. Yes. And I can't believe they got Wes Khalifa to say that uh, because they create that environment for you know, them to be comfortable enough to say what they want to say. Slowly we're now morphing into that space. Yes. And so I think that, you know, people that are per- brave enough and courageous enough, mm. they must not take the leaps and try and be the forerunners. Indeed. Like big ups to Gareth and to Tebow Touch and all those cats yeah, yeah, that are yeah. starting the digital revolution. No doubt. Um, but I think we must jump on it as well, man. People want, the consumer wants to decide what they want. Yes, And that yes. is important. So, <coughs> sorry, I'm recovering from a, um, a flu. And I'm wearing Me a corset, too. man, because I need to look cute on, on, on the TV. So, like, I'm having a near death moment here. Plus <laughs> yes, this uh, grade three perfume is not working. Miss McGuinness. <laughs> so, um, okay. So, when did you decide that you're going to be private? Because it started, let's say, the um, growth process, say from 2010 onwards, mm, no? Mm. So when did you suddenly become so um, like forward thinking and enlightened that mm. you must actually start protecting yours, your own? Because you weren't big that time. You were no, out no, there. No, no, the no. mixtapes were going down. Yeah, yeah, the mixtapes you know were what going. I mean? I but now you can't walk down the street without us being asked for a selfie. Also true. I just took a few in the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest with you. But um, I mean, you're supposed to learn from people. You know, from the examples, their mistakes. They say people can teach you two things in life, what to do and what not to do. Mm. You know, so I observed other people's uh, careers and the way they were being received in the public eye. And mm. I saw the the mistakes and the errors that they made. And one of the errors that I saw that appeared in a lot of people's, you know, uh, let's say in their daily lives were that they were broadcasting everything. And they yeah. were showing everything, you know, and mm. they were like letting people in. To the point where it's like, you don't have to know them anymore to know them, if you know what I mean. I hear you. You know what I mean? Like, you don't have to personally know this person, but they've literally, like, given away their whole life mm. in a live mm. stream or in a story, you know. Mm. And I just felt that it, it kind of cheapens the humanity, it cheapens that human experience. Man. So when we meet each other now, it's like, you think you know everything because I've true. told you everything. Yeah. You know, and yeah. I'm not, and I'm not knocking anyone that does no, that. No, 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 of course. You know, because like obviously it's still the digital age. You mm. know, and and you can't escape it no matter what. Look there, they're taking pictures <laughs> outside, they're taking <laughs> selfies through the door. <laughs> so, yes. Like, say for instance, maybe I had to broadcast myself every day. There wouldn't be a need for them to behave like this. So there's almost a mystique about you. And then, we, and then when I'm in the public eye, yeah. people get excited, people get happy, yes. you know, because now they're like, oh, we never see him, we yes. always hear him, and there he is. There's yeah. a line of, of, of Nate Dogg that I use, uh? and he says, um, I'm often heard, but I'm seldom seen. Yes. You know, and I feel like sometimes that's also how you maintain and, and keep more power as well. Yeah. If people hear about you a lot and speak about you a lot, but... You know, you only pop up now and again. A guy like Jay Z also. This is probably the biggest, you know, mogul in ah, hip hop music, ah. and we don't see him. We much. don't know much about we him. We don't actually. know much about him. We don't I saw see a, him. A, 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 um, what would you call it? It's like this guy from Time magazine mm. that sat down with him because he doesn't do interviews either. See, with and, um, and they and they try to in a very informal style, like just like just get in there. Yeah. But even still, he's just so so like sacred about his. About yeah. him, you know, which is important. Indeed. Look at this mosquito. Oh, no. Yo, you, you have fire. Like, you actually just one shot at that man. Yeah, and I can't move. As Bruce Lee ain't got nothing on you, <laughs> even with a corset, man. But he didn't do it with a corset. <laughs> man, man. You don't enter the dragon with a corset on. Trust me. <laughs> so, okay, that is, I mean, gosh, you are significantly younger than me, <laughs> but you are extremely um, old in your soul and, you, and you've got a lot of wisdom in you. Where does that come from, your pa? Uh... Yeah, it comes from various, uh, you know, various older. I see you pay a lot of homage, like older characters to the people. Yes, no, your, no, no. I have to. Timeline. I have to mm. because I feel like I can't take the credit mm. for everything. 
You and know, that is honorable. That's good. Yeah, I don't think I can do that. You know, just it, it doesn't sit well with me to have said like, yeah, I was a genius from the start. You know, because <laughs> that's clearly not the case. You know, because I'm a genius now. Yeah, I'm a genius now. <laughs> All of a sudden, oh, praise me. You know, yeah. so I just feel like I, I always need to let you know the source or the yes. origin and where it originated from, where it stems from, because. Uh then maybe you'll get a better understanding or maybe even by going to that person, you'll learn more than what you learned from me. Yeah. You know, it's like the student must have passed the teacher, but at the end of the day, if it wasn't for the teacher, yes. the student wouldn't be who he is, you know. So, yeah, it's my pa and it's various other uh, male figures, my mother as well, my older brother. Marwan. Yeah, Marwan. You know, I, I love you know. that. Look, yeah, we don't know each other, whatever, mm. but I get... High on his feed. I feel oh, like I no, know him. Oh, no, no, no. And He's it's very funny that you'd say get high because uh, <laughs> listen to his name, Marwan, Marwan, nah. Marwan. I'll just leave he's it a, there. He's a lot of fun and I yeah. find him very relatable. Yes, and, yes, and I, no. And I, I feel like I, I'm part of his daughter's life. I, yes. feel, I feel like I'm very invested there. And so it's just a realness that is very um, uncanny and, and yeah. nice. Yeah. And like even my name, Youngster, no? it's Where does that come from? There we go. Now, this is what I was going to bring it to like by always being the the kid mm. that was around the grown-ups around okay. the adults not necessarily trying to chime in or you know add my two cents in but was just sitting there and absorbing mm. soaking in you know what they were saying how they were saying it and then after a while they start to realize like this guy hasn't moved <laughs> since, mm. <laughs> since we got here you know yeah. so then at the same time they'd be like okay so he's paying attention he's very observant mm. let's give him a few gems Nice. Let's drop some jewels in his ear oh. as well so that he has something to live by because I grew up in a in a single parent household. So uh, my mother having a lot of male friends mm. that always kind of, you know, steered me like in a direction that that was ahead of my time because these men could see like, okay, he doesn't have a male role model. Mm. So let's maybe just give him a few jewels to live by. Okay. And that will also keep him out of trouble as much as it can. You know? So it's, you guys are two kids, eh? Your brother? No, no, no. There's six of us. No ways. Yeah, there's really? six of us. Yeah, my father. Um, Listen, yeah, I always say okay, this. It's a generational yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah you know, Daddy's be busy, yo. Daddy was a rolling stone. <laughs> Pops, Daddy's salute be busy. to you. You know, so yeah. my one's the oldest. Okay. Then me. Then Adnan. Then Uthman. Then Adima. And then Adam. So I'm the only one of my mother's children, though. Oh, okay. Mm. I see. But all of us are from the same father. Okay. Mm. And you guys are close? Yes, yes. My dad did quite a good job at, uh, at making sure that we all got along and we all mm. spent time together. So it didn't even feel like, oh, this is not your brother or this is That's not good. your sister. You know, he always yeah. made sure that that, that link was, yeah. was I made. I totally agree. I've come from the similar mm. circumstances and I always say, say to my dad, because sometimes like adults can be foolish as well in the yeah. behavior yeah. when they are battling things out. Indeed. And I say to my dad, like, you know, one of these days you guys are going to be like, no offense, but like in old age homes or yeah. peeing each other wet. You guys are going to be old. Mm. And then at the end of the day, all we have is our siblings. Mm. If you need a kidney, who are you going to call? If yeah. you need someone to help you out, you only have your siblings. True. Whether it's now from the same two parents or the one parent, mm. you know, we can't not have our bond. No, you know? I think that blended families are a reality. Mm. Definitely not only in South Africa, but yes. like across the world, you know. Mm. And I've met many people that come from blended families. If I look at even like famous people, like let's just take T.I. for example, he's like my favorite because... Does he has such similar a, to you? Yeah, <laughs> no, he has like such a big family. Yeah. And they're not all from the same mother. Really? I, no, no, I think oh, one okay. of them like is his son, <laughs> his son from before he met uh, Tiny. Tiny, yeah. And then she also had one before she met him. And yes. then even if I look at like Nipsey Hussle, he had a kid as well. And Lauren yes, had a kid yes. with Lil Wayne. Yes. And then he had a child with us. So, you know, so now you, you have a new brother and a new sister. Mm. But at the end of the day, like the family unit and the structure will always remain. Yeah. You know, it, if you want that, yes. you know, if, if you want to keep them together. And my father, he made sure that, you know, that he had that for his children. You know. And my father's not here anymore. He passed away. So, oh, okay. so the fact that we, you know, we kept to his word and his wishes as well, you know, yeah. it's, it's very admirable of yes, us. Yes, yes. How's the, how's the fast going? It's going well. Today's day nine, just completed. Uh, came uh -huh. from mosque. Mm. This evening, I spent thank you so much. I know that this is a time that you actually do not work overtime. Yes, this is probably the only time yeah. that I say no to a lot of things. Yeah. But also, at the end of the day, like I understand, this is this is what I do. You know, this is my work, and I also believe that God, Allah, you know, He He He, he put these things out for me 
to complete certain tasks and certain things I have to do. Mm. Like, you know, funnily people don't know this. Here's a cool story. Um, the songs Way It Go and Pose Like Stilo, which were very big songs in 2015 for me, because I just moved to Johannesburg, yes. were both recorded in the fast. Really? Written in the fast. Written on the same day. Were you just like bursting with inspiration at that time? As I said, now God puts it out like that. So whether he, he, he gave me the inspiration that day yeah. or it was next week, like I know I have a certain mission, uh. you know, and... Once you figure out what your purpose is in this life, then everything automatically just yes. takes place and yes. unravels itself for you. You know, it's like when people say, put it into the universe and it will come back. So, feel you, man. The day I decided to be a rapper mm. and the day I decided, like, okay, this is, this is going to be my occupation, that's when I met Muffin Man. That's when I found out where the studio was. And it just all was. came and into your world. Everything started yes. coming to me now. I was no longer having to seek it anymore. Now the stuff was actually finding me. So, um, meeting Nasty C before he is what he is now and, and collaborating with Stilo and, and mm. DJ Switch and mm. Stogie T and Toomey, you know what I mean? These are things that I could never have foreseen them happening in 2010 but when they were in front of me, when the opportunity presented itself I didn't turn away or I mm. didn't say, oh I can't make it because it's the fast. I was like, no this is what I have yes. to do. Yes. And you, It's like the same thing you asked me to come this evening like no, this is what I have to do. This okay. is what I do, you know? Yeah. Mm. Okay, that makes me feel also very good about what I'm doing. There's yeah, actually, yeah, yeah. There's actually purpose and, 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 um, and reason behind it. So that's pretty cool. Your mom cooked some liquor food today. She did. She made biryani. Oh, That's yes. why I'm not eating until I get back home. Have you not eaten yet? Um, like we breakfast with soup and dates. Okay, so there is something water. in your stomach. Yes, yes, yes. I had soup, okay. dates, I had dalchis and some worsas. Okay, no, no. Then okay. Then My water and then I went to mosque and, okay. then, and then came here. Because um, you, you don't have to do it like that. I know, but I mean, you're after a full day. Give hey, a man, man a chance, man. This is, this is a training ground. It's only for the fittest of the fit, sure. the best of the best. Man, I have so much respect and like really... Like and I admire the the because I also see Islam as a very um lifestyle. Yeah. So um yes, there's the religious part about it, mm. but the lifestyle part, the cleansing, the rejuvenating, the, yeah. the peace, the opening on the clearing of the mind. Yes. That's some powerful stuff. And Indeed. so Indeed. And so yeah, it's it's very refreshing when I have conversations with people because mm. for me it's just I'm the sponge then, you know? Yeah. I didn't always, you know, um practice it as much as I do now. Because obviously I was a light at one point and, you know, was was rebellious and I didn't want to listen and all that you shit. You love but God. Yeah, 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 you know, but, uh, you know, mostly bringing it upon myself also. Ah. But I got older and I started rapping also. And it's funny how hip hop puts things like in perspective for me. And as I say about my occupation, like I chose this as a job, mm. you know. And once I got into it and the... the, the the women are everywhere. The alcohol is Ooh, everywhere. Yes. You're flying here. You're getting paid this amount. And you're standing on a stage. And there's lights and, and cameras. And the ego's and boosted. Now you're getting more famous. Mm. And, you know, you don't even have to talk to girls anymore. They just want to talk to you now. Mm. So when things like that start happening, now you have to weigh up these things. Like, hey, hey, hey. Like, wait. Where is this actually leading to? Mm. Where am I going? You know? The quality of the person I am. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, I... I was fine before all these things come. I just wanted to rap. I just wanted to make a song. Mm. I didn't think that this is going to come with it now, you know. Mm. So then you start to weigh up like what's important in life, your values, your morals, your beliefs, things yeah. you were taught. And as I say, because I had, um, you know, a good foundation that was built by my mother and her, her support and, you know, family members and such, I just didn't want to completely stray off this path, you know, because I've been taught what's right and wrong. I know yeah. the difference you between do, yeah. the two. You that know? is ideally... You know? At the end of the day, so I was like, I mean, am I totally going to become a new person in this? Because it happens. I mean, you sometimes these guys do the eat through Hollywood stories <laughs> and then you see how they were when they were yes. in high school. And then you look at them now and you're like, wow, this is like a total 360 that happened yeah. to this person. 
And I at least want to hold on to like, some of it if I can. Like mm. the things that I had as just Riyad, as, as just that guy. I, I want to bring some of that with me. And I don't want to lose that because mm. that keeps me grounded. And I've placed it in my music and people love me for Absolutely. that. Absolutely. You know, I was so, going to say like that is the one thing that I find extremely valuable about, I don't like to say this word, but your brand, mm, you know, mm. that um, because um, a brand makes you almost like an, uh, uh, like a, a commodity like or, or juice or yes. Buy a youngster's CPT now. He comes in a sippy cup. If you want him warm, if you want him cold, exactly. you can put him in the microwave. It takes five to ten minutes. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's like a product. A product. When, when you're yeah. not actually, it's, it's a... You you actually this constant evolving yes you know no, and so and so so um the, the beauty of it all is that like I always found it very I appreciate as I told you this before that um you would wear your kufia in yeah, social yeah. media you Indeed. would um Indeed. you would rock your rings in your chain mm. and 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 it, you know mm. and and like traditionally wear the up to the awards you know what I mean and traditionally <laughs> and people <win>. will fr- <laughs> <laughs> who would have thought? Who would have thought? Um, and so, so yeah, like you know, people sell their souls, mm. you know, for lack of a better way of describing it, um, to be part of the mainstream culture. Or to no be, doubt, no and, doubt. And you went into Joburg, mm. you know, where you get sucked in so yeah, quickly, easily. But you easily. like grounded as fuck. You did mm. not at all surrender or give yourself up to yeah. it. Yeah. If anything, when I got there, I was even more. More Cape Townian and uh, more Muslim and uh, more, you know, Kapstadt and all these things. Like, like as I said, looking around you, you start to see things changing very quickly in this, you know, in this industry. And it's scary if you don't have a strong head on your shoulders, if you don't have yeah. discipline, you can easily, easily become someone else. And just as quick as they'll suck you in is as quick as they'll spit, spit you, you out, out. Mm-hmm. you know. Mm. So I just felt like. I don't want to be a statistic. I don't want to end up like MCM or end up like mm. a vanilla ice where <laughs> I was cool for that season. Yes. And then after that, because I didn't, you know, I didn't have yeah. a better head, I didn't have cooler, yeah. you know, thoughts. And you contributed so much to the industry. You added so much value to the industry. Yeah. And then you just like null and void within like Indeed. a month or even a week or whatever. Yeah, because that's when your character is tested, mm. when you receive, mm. you know. When you're living in times and, and you're struggling and, and times are tough, you don't mind because you don't have. Yes. And then once you receive, that's that the is biggest actu- test. Though. That is actually the test. You know, that's this when is your, true. That is when your, your persona, your, your beliefs, your character gets questioned. Everything tested. comes into play at that point. Yeah. You know, so you have to be very strong, especially in this, because this is like literally everything on a silver platter, mm. especially if you're good at what you do. Yes. They they give you more, you know, and yeah. people are still shocked in the clubs when they want to give me bottles and when they want to uh. give me, you know, all these these, these added perks mm. that I didn't even ask for, mm. and I say no. Mm. They're confused and they're like, shit. So what do? So what does he want? How else do I grease how, him up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like how else can I make this man stay long? Yeah, or how else yeah. can I like you know? I'm here for my hour. And I'm here to do what the, this is work. But yes, as, yes. As cool as it is, and and the lights are yes. on, and people love it, and you know my name's on the wall, mm. yeah, whatever the case. Like when I'm done, I'll stay for a little bit and take a few photos, and then mm. I'm gonna go home. And you know what the sad thing is? It's it's beautiful that you're doing this because I remember watching a docky, Brenda Fassi, for example. Mm. Um. I mean, power, okay? We're talking about a woman that could fill up a stadium yeah. through word of mouth. Indeed. Um, on her highest high, mm. she got paid with crates of beer. Mm. With some, And I mean, she, she had a pool, but nobody guided her and directed and, and led her in a space where yeah. there was some form of business management, some form of artist management. You know, just exploitation, exploitation all the time. And so I think that you working towards longevity, yeah, towards no, legacy. And I mean, if I look at it, we're sitting as eight years later, you know, and there's some rappers who I've seen who have been in the industry for like three years and who's out already, mm. you know, and it and you saw the potential. I saw the potential and sometimes it kind of scares me because I'm like, oh, is, is that what it's becoming mm. now? Mm. You know, it's now not even like something we can look at as a career. It's mm. something you can look at now as like a hobby jobby, you know, like it's cool to do now. But in a few years' time, you're going to have to go work behind the camera instead of being in front of it. Or you're going to have to be an engineer or a mm. producer. You can't be the rapper you were anymore mm. because you kind of fucked that up. No, I never seen it. And because this has been my dream for <laughs> forever, 
Like, I can't afford to do that. Mm. I can't afford to do that. I'd be wasting a, a golden opportunity. So this method to your madness and you're sticking to it. I'm sticking to it. Like, yes, I'll compromise certain things here and there. Mm. But the things that benefit me and that benefit my soul, mm. like, I, I can't, you know, I can't short sight. And good for you for having that clarity. Because it can get very misty. It can get very quick that you, you, I always say like if you, like if you, your spirit and your mind is not clear, mm. it gets clogged up and then you get, then you block out the blessings and you block yeah. out the good things that come your way yeah. because you're so like, like clouded by all this other mm. frivolous crap, you know? Yeah. So, um, like clearly there's been a system that's been working and yes. it's, it's, it's going, it's going. It's, it's probably your conscience that's also guiding you as Indeed. well. Indeed. You know, no, most definitely like, I I struggle sometimes, you know, to understand certain things in the industry. I will look and I'll be like, okay, you chose that guy. Okay, this is this is what you decided to uh, to make number one. Okay, you're gonna make them win. Or, mm. Okay, the award's going there. I understand why. Mm. And it's sad, but I mean, because I'm not willing to compromise on certain things, I'm only gonna be able to go a certain way, or I'm only gonna be able to go as far as they allow it. Mm. And because of that, I've come up with the alternative of, well, like if they're not gonna welcome me in with open arms, then I don't wanna come in at all. Then. Good for you. Then what I'm going to do is rather go the complete opposite way, because I mean, if you tick off the Kryptonian, if you tick off the Muslim, if you tick off the Khaled, and those are three things that you already don't want. So you like minority level 7,000. There we mm. go. Then I'm already red flag. Mm. You know? Mm. Then even if I had to drop the accent maybe and just be Muslim and color, that's already now something that's okay. Then I drop the Muslim that I'm just mm. cut. Then that's already a strike. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? So then what the hell are you left with? I might as well just go all in then mm. if that's the case. And it seemed to have worked for me this far. It took longer. Mm. But like I say, yeah, we are eight years later and mm. I've seen guys who couldn't even make it for five years. Yeah, no, I 100% hear so, you. So I'm very fortunate to mm. have actually succeeded mm, mm. in this and we're still and succeeding. It's, it's, it's as basic as, as, um, as it's, it's, it's just, it's, it's sincere and it's truthful. Yeah. And, and I think that because when we're working hard at pre pretending and, and, and creating something that's not, it's mm. more work. Yeah. It is. <laughs> it's a it lot of actually, more work. Yeah, it is actually like, We've all been in like an adolescence and juvenile stages of life, and mm. even then, like because rap wasn't popular then, like let's say 10, 15 years ago. Now I remember there was a very long house period. Thank you. It was and the very yard long. numbers and all and that the shit. Yard, like, and then all the guys used to wear their shirts down to their chest and this is boss Yes, the, and then remember when the clubs had, uh, you, you had to wear tie and the, yeah, and the parapuntas. Yes. And, and now, I'm, now, now, now just take yourself back to that phase. Yes, I remember it. Very so during day. that time, like I was always in, I was always on my rap set. Like there wasn't a time in my life when I wasn't. Mm. And because it wasn't the, you know, the order of the day, mm. I... I was kind of like ashamed of it. I was kind of embarrassed. Like I was ah. like, yeah, dude. so, so I can do something, but because it's not, it's not popular, it's not cool yet. Yeah. No you can't one, rap in squatters and crockets. Yet. No, you, like in high school, even you couldn't do this shit. You <laughs> could not do it, you know, yeah. especially like if your brother thought you were whack or something or like thought you were trying to be American. Yes. And the peer pressure is real then, it's eh? It's heavy. You know, that was the time of the GHDs you know, and YDE. Did you you know what I'm saying? I didn't the, no, I didn't have the I had to cut faders. <laughs> oh, I didn't have oh, faders okay. back then. So, because I had this, you know, this talent, this specific one, I always wanted to play soccer. I wasn't good at that. I always wanted to like dance with the ones. I wasn't good at that either. Mm -hmm. I had the rhythm, but I couldn't like dance like yeah, 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 Omari yeah. and shit. You know yeah, what I mean? They yeah. were heavy into that. Yeah, man. Stomp so, the yard and You know what I mean? And I mean, Blake, we know Blake the champ. Yes, yes. He was the man of that at that time. You know, he's been this way since then. And I remember just seeing all the girls go mad over this man. I'm thinking to myself, like, fuck, we're like, I need to dislocate my neck. I need neck. something. <laughs> oh, wait, I need. I need some sort of a skill here. Channing Tatum, let me just yeah. summon this man's spirit, man, bro. Something. I need yes. to step up to the streets, man. Yeah. I need a revolution. Yeah. So, during this whole period of my life, I was trying to fit in. Mm. So, whatever, you know, was accepted, whatever was, you know, was trending, that's yeah. what I was trying to do. And I tried so many different things Yo, to fit in. I would in. pay good money to see photos of you then. Because oh, no, I, I don't, I don't. 
we ever imagine you with a shirt on? I, d- I can't picture you no, no, with, a, in, with, with a, with a, with a, a cake lappy brook on. I've got the photos in atmosphere. <laughs> oh, I was there. Snap. I was there, my bro. I was there. And, 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 you, and you could feel like, like you you lying to yourself, eh? Yes. No, no, no. I was definitely lying to myself during that period. And the funny thing is there are people that um, that I went to school with that see me now. They were like, yo, my bro, I didn't know you could rap. And I'm like, yeah, because I never fucking told you. Yeah. Because the peer pressure was yeah, just damn wrong. When I told the people, I saw the response it got, and it wasn't a positive response. Mm. No, that is. You know, especially yeah. the girls also. They were yeah. like, oh, oh, yes. oh. And So I was like, okay, yes. no shit. I, I at least need to get a kiss here from, <laughs> from one of them. So I'm just going to leave this rap thing for home. When I'm at home, I'll do yes, this. Yes, yes. And that's where it stayed. It stayed in my house, it stayed in my room. Ah. My mother knew, most of my family knew. Ah. And that is who I chose to keep it around because those are the people who were at least a bit more supportive of it, you know. Yeah, but it makes a lot of sense why you are so sacred about yourself yeah. also now. Yeah. Um, it's almost like, you know, like Slam Dog Millionaire. It's mm. like, uh, like it has your, your journey yeah. determined your, your, your end. Yes, yes. So it's like, it speaks a lot about how it came to this point. Supposing Joburg, you know, for, Lack of a better way of describing mm. the arrogance game is way more intense there. Yeah, and the and the fame and the confidence, whatever, is way more intense. So it's almost like that's part of the package, mm. you know. But I mean, let's think of it. You are a seventeen-year-old kid in Joburg. You are a black kid. You come from the castle. You're going to school in whatever area it may be. You sign a five hundred thousand or eight hundred thousand rand. Oh, not even that far. Yes, Questa walking past you in the mall. Mm. You go to. Uh, 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 the stadium here's uh, Zola mm. you go to another place and here's Double HP yeah. and you go to you know what I mean so there's so many examples yeah. of what a successful artist looks like sounds like dresses like yes. what they live like yes. so you know in your head look I mean school now but if I like pursue this shit after school or even during school I could end up like him Word. because there he is and he comes from the cars, he yes. comes from the location so I understand his lifestyle and he understands mine whereas here what did he do? That was it. Mm. And I see you doing a lot of stuff with the schools. Are you yes. doing it only in the Western Cape or are you doing it national? Um, for now <laughs> only the Western Cape. The funny thing is though that the uh, the school tour we did now the only two sponsors we had was Cape Audio and Puma so uh, most of it was done through us you know through so ourselves are you not doing it through the education department no education department no government assistance whatsoever not to once again uh, try to you mm. know, say anything bad or point a finger but it just also shows me um, once again that going the opposite way has worked out for me you know yes. because I'm literally self-sufficient. Yes. We as YG are literally yes. self-sufficient. I was going to touch on that now mm. and talk about at the end of the day, you going the opposite way and not following the crowd, yet the numbers don't lie. Yeah. You know, the masses know you. The crowd's uh, following the, me. The crowd is following <laughs> you. The numbers don't lie. And, yeah. that, and that is the beauty, of, the beauty of the age that we're in at the moment. We're in mm. a digital age. If Thank I want God. to use Thank my God last 10 rand or my last 5 megabytes of data mm. to devoted to youngster yeah, then you know you can do that yeah no one is going to determine to me what song I have to listen yeah. to and, and sadly that is the reality what's happening in radio radio is, is battling with the online game um, I uh, mad respect for that gap and that space in broadcast because yeah. everybody has a space under the sun but um, as I say Times are changing. I can hear yeah. People no. deter- determine what they want to what they want to consume. Yeah. I I listen to the radio only when we when we're traveling usually because we're always driving. You know, and get a feel of the the, the vibe. To hear, you know, mm. what's being played and even TV. TV's in the same position. Yes, yes. TV's in the same position. I know I know many households mm. that go straight on online television. Yeah. They um they get their feed in the morning if they need any I mean they get pop ups if they want to know yeah. what's in the news. Um I can honestly say I only listen to the radio for news. And when I listen to the radio, I listen to talk radio. Yeah. Because I'm in the space now where I need to have simulation. Yeah. You know, you know what I mean? I'm in that yes. space of my life now. So I need to be able to hear critical opinions, etc. Yeah. Um, in terms of music, I'm very specific about what I want to hear. Yeah. You know? I determine, I can select. And then the beauty of it is my phone reminds me when there's a new number from Youngster. Yeah. Or if there's a new, you know what I mean? So also the convenience game has changed. I mean... We must also bear in mind we still live in South Africa where mm. the majority of the population is still, you know, introduced through traditional media. They mm. get the information through TV and radio yeah. and newspapers. So we still have to remember that. 
But also at the end of the day, I have to play in that sphere because of that. Because yes. I know many of the households 100%. are still listening to the radio, still watching mm. TV. I still have to make sure that I'm there, mm. present. Even if it's not as much as your 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 pop artists, your mainstream artists, I still mm. have to just let them know, hey, I can swing with yes, them. Yes, yes. Because play with somehow there's almost this weird officialness that if you appear on there, even though there's only five people watching, yeah. there's an officialness when you actually appeared on telly yes. or on radio. But if you were to look at the online again, then you mm. would have gotten close to a million impressions. There we go. You know, just so weird and odd. Yeah. But it's, I suppose it comes with the, like the territory. The, uh, the music video of West Cup now is going to be my second video that gets a million views. And if I look at it like, I, I don't know how many people really watch TV, but I doubt a million people have seen oh, no. me on TV. Oh, you know no. what I mean? I, I doubt they've yeah. seen me on because TV. Because they don't want to be limited to 8 o'clock. Youngster's going to be on yeah. this show. You must tune you in. Must tune when in. I'm out here trying to survive, trying mm. to make money, trying to get off my bus, whatever, no you know? So, um, I totally hear you. And, and, and a million is... Oh, it's no? I think I could be the first Capetonian rapper to have gotten a million views. Look here, let's put it this way. In Namibia, eh, their population's about 2 million or maybe 2.5. Mm. So, you basically like covered... A country's population, you know, yeah, yeah. which is which is pretty impressive stuff. And that's crazy for someone that, like, I was struggling to get played on TV for years. Because you just weren't fitting. Because I wasn't fitting into the, the categories that mm. they had set out, you know. And I do remember going back and forth with the TV always and it was constant battle. And also, I probably shouldn't have said some of the things I said. That's probably why they also weren't playing it. What was it, like, controversial? Yeah, like, I was saying, fuck a top ten list. And, you know, oh, then I got... Yeah. Oh, that's a brilliant song, you know what I mean? And then Reddy D was involved with me also. He was like, yeah, no, nah, we're also behind you. So it's like I started mm. rallying up people that they, mm. you know, Which was not respected. the case. It was more like, can we just be critical about things? Yeah, yeah, you know, it was like it was supportive also. You know, they were like, no, nah, bro, like this is a new age and you shouldn't be dealing with the old problem. Mm. You know, so, so at the end of the day, like I also pick my battles, but I always pick like big battles. I don't want to fight over petty things. Like yeah. I want to fight for something like that that really contributes to the next generation as well. Because mm. the rappers that are coming up in Cape Town, they also gonna have to do the same thing that I'm doing. Yeah. They're gonna have to go through the same shit I went through, mm. the same channels, the same hurdles, same obstacles. So maybe if I like, you know, pave the way or make it a little bit easier, smoothen the road. Mm. then it won't be as bumpy for them as it was mm. for us when we started doing it, you know. Yeah. And it's actually safe to say that since, like, Prophets of the City and those guys, yeah. the rise of the youngsters, and, I mean, I'm even go as far as to say, like, the Wittbrot and the Jackanovas yeah. and the Himmelbeersums, that is all recent. And it, it was, you can say it's all contemporaries. Yes. Even though they've been doing it and <coughs> yeah. respect to their craft. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's all recent and thank goodness for the likes of Ready D that's creating the platform. Oh, yes, indeed. But what would you say is the biggest challenges? Because, I mean, if I listen to like Whit Pruitt, for example, mm. and yes, he's very niche, he's mm. very, you know, regional. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the guy's got like, he's, he's humanist, he's, in, he's got storytelling skill, he's got, mm. and I'm not, I'm not using him specifically. I'm just saying mm. that these cats are out there in yeah, no stuck in an over street, no upper park, uh, an over park, wherever. You know, mm. they're out there. Uh, what, what would you say is the biggest challenge that you've experienced? I would say that, the, you know, cracking the media and uh, definitely the marketing and the promoting side of things. You know what I mean? The, the people you're trying to sell to at the end of the day have never been sold before. With what you have to offer. Yeah. You mm. know, so... You, you're basically building your audience, you're building a market. Mm. Whereas in Joburg, there's already a <coughs> set market, there's already a set audience. Like I said, if this guy looks at Cuesta, if he looks at, you know, um, a tear gas, if he mm. looks at a, a KO or whoever it may be, mm. he can already see the blueprint, he can already see the steps and, you know, the, the follow through that's been laid out from and his also, predecessors. You're not going to do a liquor brand. You're not. So, so I'm mean, in a different position. So it's yeah. very tough in terms of, of, of how you make your bread and butter the again. Prophets of the city got banned. That's our example. Mm. <laughs> that's no, our it's, example. It's unfortunate. Black noise does school tours. That's our example. Mm. You know, a Brasifani cup, we lost Mr. Fat, and then things kind of dissolved, dissolved after that. Yeah. You know, so. Unfortunately, in Cape Town, that is the exo That is our blueprint. I feel as if brands just are prejudiced when it comes to investing in that. Yeah, no, definitely. And also, it's shameful, actually, because it's a market. Yes, and like I was having this conversation uh, last night because um, I was looking at the, 
the television and I was thinking to myself, like, you know, no, so many people have sold off colored culture mm. and yet colored culture has never been sold off by colored people. Mm. You know? This is so true. Like only as of recent, really. No, look here, there are shows. So it's small. There are shows grains. on the pay channel, no? Mm. That I watch and I cringe and I think to myself, like, how dare you make as if this is, this is who yours. my people are? <laughs> Not that I'm saying I know who my people are, yeah. but that you are not representative. You're probably representative of a very small group of people. Um, but the masses, the mm. real Afrikaans, Afrikaps, Af- whatever you want to yeah, call yeah, it, yeah. this is not who they are. Yeah, indeed. You know, and you feel so betrayed that the media does this to you. That yeah. you're the jester, the snook eating, teeth missing, yeah. Rothman smoking, pregnant, you indeed, know. Indeed, indeed. It's, it's exhausting. And then when you don't fit into that, then all of a sudden they're like, okay, but can't you do more of that? Because that is kind of like the only envelope we have for you. We it's don't have anything. That or, it's either mm, that what can or I, do for I don't you? know what you're going to do after that, bro. You know? so, so you battle with brands? No, I think I've like established myself very firmly as to who I am. You know? So when they approach me, I think they already know what they're getting themselves into. And they were forced to adapt to you. And they to forced them. to adapt. Mm. You know? like the alcohol brands approach me strictly for events. Yes, and I, you've explained this to me before, mm. that there is the actual face of liquor, and yeah. there's the, I'm standing on a stage that happens to be sponsored by a liquor. You know what I mean? Yeah. A couple of banners around me, yes. and some wording at the back, I can do that still, yes, you know? Yes, yes. But, I mean, I think when I did the song Arabian Gangster, and mm-hmm. when I did Way It Go as well, and when I said, Simi Korban, Walaikum Salam, and then I even wore the scarf mm-hmm. in the music video, like, all those things were kind of me subtly trying to just plant that seed in people's minds, like, just remember you dealing with a Muslim bra. Yes, mm. I'm a rapper. Yes, I got tattoos. Yes, I'm Do You have tattoos? Yeah, I got tattoos. Yeah. How many? Uh, you see, also hidden private. Uh, this oh brings me God. back. <laughs> this brings me back to the private sector. <laughs> I you know what I mean? Private. Mm. No, but, but you have your personal reasons for that? I have my personal mm. reasons for that, you know. So I just also wanted to establish that that identification so that you're not confused at the end of the day. When I made the, uh, the song, mm-hmm. Yati. Mm. And people asked what it meant. And I said, oh, my name's Riyadh. They were like, huh? And so like, yes, I'm Muslim. Like, oh, really? Like, no, really? don't lie. Did they not know you're Muslim? They didn't know I'm Muslim. You know, so... Wow. So these are also ways of me just trying to solidify this character of mine and also introduce him to the actual person yes. I am aside and from And unapologetically also say that this is also a person out there. Yeah. And they can... Yo, I mean, <laughs> I can't tell you how many Muslim children... And mm. parents have come to me and said, yo, shukran for what you're doing. Yes, yes. We for appreciate also, this. For re-establishing um, and rebranding the notion of the Muslim yeah, yeah. youngster, the 21st century the 21st Muslim century youngster. Muslim youngster. Yeah. The 21st century Muslim youngster. Because at the end of the day, like, obviously, I mean, music is haram and especially hip-hop music, you know. Really? Of, yes, yes, yes. I'll tell you why, though. Uh, because, I mean, I, I hate to go into, like, the, yeah. you know, the Quran and the biblical books. But yeah. If we look at the past, as they say, the devil was an angel at one point, mm. you know. So his job in heaven, as I as I learned it, was that he provided the music. <laughs> okay, okay, I hear you. He used to provide the music. Yeah, you know, the he, last maker, indeed, you know. Yeah. You know? yeah. And um, because of that, okay, because it was one of his tools, mm. and, Makes then sense. He, and then he fell, you know. So it still has that stigma attached to yeah. it, that it's haram, that yeah. it's something that... And I, I totally understand why. Yes. Because you know the power you have with I your music. I know the power that I have. I know the power that Tupac and them had over me even. Mm-hmm. Growing up, it was like hypnosis. Mm. You say something and I'm there with you. I'm transported yeah. into You're this place. You're also part of this battle Indeed, that's happening I'm, now. I'm with, with yeah. Thug Life. I'm with all of them. <laughs> I'm a junior mafia. Yes. I am with the, the outlaws. I yeah. am part of it. You know. Yes. So, so if I look at it, I totally understand why they say it, which is why I chose to make songs like Arabian Gangster mm-hmm. and I chose to make songs like Yati and I chose to make songs like 786 because I wanted people to understand that, okay, yes, it's wrong. Mm. But if it was so wrong, mm. why has God given me the ability to 100%. do this? Why is 100%. he giving me the talent to because do Because ultimately he's the creator of everything. He's the creator, good and of bad. Everything, good absolutely. And bad. So it's, it's, so our, it's our way, how we... Somewhere along the line, mm. he must have known I was going to do this. With the day I came out of the womb, he must have known, like, okay, this one, mm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add something to this yes. one that's going to make the others confused. 100%. And the others might even resent him for it. But if he's smart enough, because I've given him the knowledge, I've given him the brain, if he's smart enough, he'll figure out 
how to use it wisely 100%. and how to use it responsibly. And he will convince those that he is not condemned and that mm. he is actually one of them, mm. you know. So do you get a lot of flack from staunch purist Muslims? I used to. And then I think that I'm going to I'm going to say that the youth saved me on that one. The kids kind of like said, "No, mommy, listen again." You know, "No, mommy, watch this." No, mommy, look closer. Yes. Mommy, did you hear what he said? Yes, mommy, yes. Mommy, did you hear he said, Alaikum salam? In yes. The <laughs> mommy, do you see he's wearing a fez? You know <laughs> what I mean? Like, I think <coughs> because I kind of like shoved it in the face uh, of, you know, anything I did and everything a new I norm. did. Yes. Yes, I hear you. you know, I hear so you. that was also kind of my way of trying to win them over because I thought this music kind of, you know, is limited for a certain generation. It's a young man's sport, you know, uh. hip hop music, especially it's youth culture. But my mother listened to hip-hop. Uh. So if, if that was then and she was listening to Biggie, surely I could find some way to make a salih woman who's took a stick with a dookie on. Uh. Surely I could find something for her to enjoy of my music. Yeah. So when I made songs like Vest Cup and mentioned yeah. Ruti and Chicken Curry, yes. eat the crumbs and the... Yes. They even used to... Oh, he likes it. You know because what I mean? Because it's an identity, man. It's there a sense of like pride. And you know what I mean? Uh, yes. So, so just detailing the culture, going a bit further into it, you know, mm. giving them some pointers of what I experienced and yes. they will know like, okay, no, he's actually one of us, you know? No, 100%. Mm-hmm. And I think it, it goes even broader than just... Cape Malay culture. Yes, no, it definitely, goes to definitely. Cape Coloured culture. Cape Coloured culture, um, because I, even Christian ladies now to no, make the sisters, 100%. they make the some worse, as you know. So 100%. I see myself as some sort of ambassador. Hundred mm. percent, and and I think that is why you have the gravitas and the value. Yeah. Because the youth market is identifying. Yes. Like, and it's so powerful. And they've never had someone speak their you know language on this level before. And we're always looking internationally for our role models, etc., etc. Or we're looking over the border to Joburg to see what's Even happening. Even me, I, I looked overseas for my role models as well. Mm. Aside from my mother, who's my first role model mm. in life. But I always searched for, you know, for American artists yeah. to, you know, to kind of set the tone for the rest of my life. Yeah. And I understand why I did that. Even though I knew Reddy D was and those kinds of guys, I always saw it as something like it's reserved for black Americans. Yes, yes. And that's just not the stereotypes yeah. that we are conditioned to believe. Unfortunately, mm. you know. But we're changing it. <laughs> 100%. I mean, these white rappers, Arab rappers. Yeah. Like, uh, I love seeing that. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, the game is changing. Yeah. Your mommy is clearly your everything. Yes. Are you guys like super, super close? Yes, 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 yes. I mean... Probably the hero of, of so my stories. So you tell stories. your mommy everything? Yeah, yeah. I told her most of my of my life. Like today even we were, we were talking and I was, uh, we were walking in the, I mean, the area and um, I was pointing out certain places. I was like, yo, I had one of my first fights here in this shop and I was showing like, yo, I used to smoke there at the back of the park. Were you like, an off lighty? <gasps> I think, uh, I mean, like I said, I brought it upon myself. Yes. There were certain things I did just to fit in for the temporary moment of success or the temporary during, moment Like the of, beginning of high school kind of thing? You no, know, throughout the entire. Oh. Throughout the entire thing. Okay. Of I actually went to school with your brother. Were well, you at normies? Yes, I was a grade below him. Yes, you are 100%. Yes, you, dad or my brother told me that before, I, yes. I, I actually went to school with him. Yes. yes. He was a great, you, you're going to ask me. He might not know probably everything, but he knows, he knows, uh, he knows enough. He no. knows enough of what No, but what, I think I became my brother as well. He was banned from valedictory. It, yes, me also. Just... Me also. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was banned from a trick ball. I didn't have a trick ball. That's, that was like a sad day of my mother. Oh, shame, man. Sad I mean, she day. wants to make a table. She wants to take photos of a boy. I'm going to take her to the Grammys. That's fine. Yes. <laughs> I told yes. Her, I told her that. Hallelujah in the it's universe. All good. It's all good. Check yeah, I, I, you. I'm, I'm behind you. I will see it. Oh, yeah. So, um, you're now a private cat. So, I'm not going to, um, like, Go deeper, but mm. I'm going to play a game with you where you must at okay. least break the surface. Okay. So I'm going to ask you to pick one, okay? okay? And we're going to go very quickly through it. Right. Snoop Dogg Tupac. Mm. Just Shit. quickly, man. Tupac. Also, okay. Curry and rice or curry and ruti? Curry and ruti. Oh, Jordans or Nike? Mm. Jordan. A cap or a beanie? Ooh. Cap. Okay. Mom's food or restaurant? <sighs> no brainer. Please. <laughs> Comfortably dressed or look cool? And Comfortably dressed. Okay. I wear my bro. How's it boot? <laughs> I wear my bro. <laughs> Habana, Brian Habana or Herschel Gibbs? 
Of all my aunties, of my cousins, whose mothers, take a village, of yeah. my grandmother, take a like, village, because yeah. those are the women, the strong women around mm. me that carried me through life. Yeah. And then I didn't post a pic of my mother because I was like, well, I posted a pic of my mother like last week or two weeks ago because I was like, no, I have a song on my album called Mother's Child. Yeah. And the last line in the song is, give your mom some chocolate cake because every day is Mother's Day. Yes. Because in my head, I'm like, yeah, but I don't need a day to yeah. honor my mother. Like, yes. I, I do this shit for her every day. Yes. I tell her I love her every day. Yes. So, yeah, it's Mother's Day. I bought her something. I didn't, I didn't publicize post a, it. I didn't publicize yeah. it, but... Like as far as Celine is concerned, like is the name Celine? Her name Celine. Yeah. Okay. So, so it was her birthday on Mother's Day. Really? How lovely is and that? And that's why I was like, nah. I need to, I, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I need to give her a moment. You know, we just need to freeze everything for that time. And she's a mother, you know, so it's like a double whammy. So, are you based in Cape Town again? Now you're going back to Joburg. Or do you dabble yeah, between the no, two? No, I'm based here, but yeah, I'm like everywhere. Okay. You know, okay. I, I go where I'm needed. And she's pretty happy that you're back home again. Yeah, I know she loves it, especially in this time now when it's the fast, you know, because then she knows, um, she knows where was... to find me. Yeah? She's yes. like, I know where you're going to be. Yeah. You know? Like, you're going to be at home, you're going to be in Moscow, you're going to be with your family. <laughs> you know, so it's like, it's it's a little bit more manageable now during this time. Like, And also I get to see my family a lot. Like, mm. that also uh, saddens me that I miss out on birthdays Yo, and I miss I out that, on, like, yeah. graduations and mm. important events, you know, in my family's life. Mm. And as you say, you know about that as well. And yeah, I mean... They understand, but yeah. at the same time, you as the individual are the one who's missing out, not yeah. them really. No, it They're is. missing your presence, but yes. you're missing out on the entire yeah. thing. You know? And it will never be relived again because we no. don't get married to get married six times. We you don't turn 16 once, you turn 21 you once. You have a matric ball once. You have the matric ball once. When you miss those things, mm. like all you can do is look at the photo and be like, oh yeah, that's that time when I wasn't there. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's that time yeah. when my sister had a little... Valentine's ball dance yes. and I didn't, you know, and I wasn't there to take the, the yeah. photo with her. I missed out on weddings and mm. all kinds of things that I should have been at, you know. But like I said, the people understand because they look at my schedule or they see where I am and they see what I'm doing and they're like, yeah, there's no possible way you could make it. You know? And also I think it's out of respect for the fact that this is your job. This you don't go job. and question someone that works a nine to five and be like, yo, why are you not available on Wednesday at, five, yeah, yeah, at three yeah. o'clock, you know? Yeah, like somebody also like, yo, me, bro, you're always busy. I'm like, no, no, no. During the week when you at work, yes, you can come see me anytime yes. probably during then because I'm probably going to end the day at like 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, I'll yeah. be at home again. On the weekend when you're not at work, when it's your free time. And when you're leisuring. Yeah, when you're leisuring. That's yes. when I'm doing my week's work in three days. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Grafting. Whole Pushing day up sometimes. My everything. Yeah, mm. sometimes I'm shooting videos in the day and doing shows at night. And that's consecutive. That's Monday, Tuesday. I mean, that's Friday, Saturday and Sunday. Mm. You know, so... I mean, when it was the school tour now, that was 
that was yeah, hectic. that was pretty manic. Yeah, that was hectic because that's during the week and then weekends is shows and the album was out, so I was doing promos yeah. all over. I want to tell you this mm. something I observed, and I am a very observant person of media behavior mm. of the future generations, and I was like this youngster skaxlum because the way I am gathering this, besides the fact that you have a beautiful philosophy philosophy for what you are leaving with these like young yeah, 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 yeah. What you're also doing is you are breeding the next generation of Y genes of of, of youngster followers. Correct, you know, correct. They're my pension fund. <laughs> they are your new consumers that's what, of information. That's what I call them. You know? You know? And, and and it's and it's it's powerful because you say God is working through you, doing mm. it for a good purpose and a you know yeah. a meaningful plight. But in the same breath, I mean. How smart is that, man? Like, you know, I don't want to target the twenty odd year old person. No, he doesn't give a fuck anymore. Exactly, and you he are at the care. point now that you're gonna start worrying about your taxes, worry about you and your yeah. local lateral cash that you have, like yeah. you're saying there. Yeah. So, was the method to the madness, or what was the intention? I mean, that I credit to Black Noise and POC. Okay, that was their system that as well. That was their system, like I said. I remember they used to come to my mom's school. Yeah, and, and they came to our school as well to uh, to do normies. The, yeah, yeah, they came to do the the b boy. Uh, the b-boy demos so um, and they even had after school classes that uh, you could go to and go do the the, uh, the workshops and the lessons Emil with them with the Emil came yes, with the big hair and shit yes. so so if i look at it and it's as i said earlier on with the blueprints and with the with the strategies you in joburg you have a different blueprint to copy from your blueprint is going to be how they operate that side. Mm, pop bottles. They're going to pop bottles. Working. And mm. also, like, they have the media machine at their disposal. Yes. It's at their doorstep. Yeah, it's and it's not, money. It's quick, quick, you know yeah. what I mean? It's from one channel to the next. Yeah. You know what I mean? You can do five TV networks in a yeah. day yeah. in Joburg, and that's just TV. And then you, just, you can do six radio stations the night. That's just the radio. Then you can do, like, four clubs after that sure. because the clubs only start looking from, like, one, two. Yes, see. A.M. You can so, drop a few verses there and that's just the way it's going on. And then time. you can leave on Monday. Just and you would have, you have worked the whole scene in and that weekend. And then you are on a plane back there, knackered as fuck. Yeah, but your name is going around for probably, let's say, that week that you're gone. But yes. after that, it's done. Yes. Because no, now good. someone else is there doing the same thing. 100%. You know, if, if Ricky wants to go promote a t-shirt... Yeah. You'll just go on Channel O, you'll just go on MTV, you'll just go on Vuzu, and you'll work it. You'll work mm. it all, you know. And it's like a formula up there, really. And there it is, it's done. So now the kid that's sitting at home, at, who's at school still, he sees this and he's like, okay, I'm going to go stand outside at the radio station and wait for this man the next yeah. time he goes there. Or I'm yeah. going to stand outside there just, you know, regularly and mm. see whoever comes out of there. Maybe it's euphonic, maybe mm. it's black coffee. Maybe There's always someone, juicy there's always coming someone out. who's mm. going to come out there. So that's their, their blackboard that they learn from. Mm. Now, let's look at our blackboard. As I said, we look at the Reddy D them, they got banned. Why? Mm. Because the message was clearly too militant for South yeah. Africa. It was too militant for and the Cape Too progressive for you. You must have progressive for that place. So now look at my message. Same thing, militant. Mm. Why? Because that's my example. Mm. If I look at what Emil them did by coming to the schools, that's my example. Mm. So, that, so I'm thinking, okay, so this is how I need to work Cape Town. Because yeah. it's regional. You know, you, you have to apply that method to where you are, to the environment. Yes. So I'm looking at my environment. I'm seeing like, okay, there's only one or two, three radio stations here. There's only about two TV networks here. Yeah. And then that's it. And that's it. It's that why I am creating it. platforms like this. No, kudos and not that, to you. you know, and, and not because I want some credit. It's just that we need to have broader channels we of information, need to expand. man. We can't wait on Hectic Nine and we can't yes. wait on Espresso and we can't wait on. And have a few little gods sitting in their little towers determining when and how and what and why. And we those shows do benefit us. I mean, yeah, but they, they don't they even work. look at these cats, eh? They are generally probably in their 40s, maybe 50s. No no ageism or anything. What mm. I'm saying is you don't even know what the market wants. You don't even go out into the clubs. You probably do the occasional farmer's market on a Saturday with your dog. Yeah. The point is, like, you, you're not out there. Yeah. You know? DJ Easy took me on my first school show trip. But easy is like 
like the, the realist when it comes to that kind of stuff. Man. Yeah, he took me to Settlers High in 2010. He was like, do you want to come with me to, to, to Settlers High? No, but he's always been legit about like, like and Just me and him went. There was no really? one else. And, and, and you know, and look at that day. Eh? He didn't need the army to pull it off. No. I remember one day he was like, we were in a meeting and he was like, this, look here, we're going to paint this school. And all the obvious now, the egos, mm. all the DJs sitting in the DJ meeting, uh. they're like, <coughs> uh. me, are you crazy? And they were like, we're going to paint the school. Like, who's down? And he was like, you know, like a kid here. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, we're going to change lives and whatever. And, um, and, and that has been his constant struggle. And he's still doing it. And yeah. big ups to him. He's going to keep on doing the fight, the great Azul, fight. Azul, Easy, E20. You know, he's Azul's um, academies here, eh? Yes, yes. He's right here. Most definitely, most definitely. Yeah. And I mean, those guys, they, they played a very big role in, in my career. Yeah. Myself in the Muffin Man. I remember when I first met Easy and Azul, they had a show on UCT radio. Yeah. That's when I first met them. And they even made fun of me and Muffin because they said, like, Young Stan, the Muffin Man, that sounds like something my daughters would watch. You know what I mean? Yeah. They were like making jokes about it. Yeah. And it was so quiet for me to experience that, man. Like, there's most different, you know, levels that you clock. It's like a game, you know what I mean? You conquer certain uh, levels and you turn certain peoples into your believers now after mm, that, you mm. know. And all those things, I remember coming into Guru and Reddy D just looking at me like I was another one of the rappers who's coming for the cypher, mm. you know. And, and then earning that stripes, earning that reputation, going back, you know, being consistent, not giving up. Yeah. If, if I didn't felt I did well last week, I'm coming back this week to come and redeem yes. myself. No one said it was yeah. bad, but I'm just like, ah, I didn't yeah. like that verse at that time. I have yeah. to do better than that, Plus you know? it's live. It's, it's like live, it's electric, you know what eh? I mean? So I'm, do, I'm doing live freestyling on the mm. radio. I'm choosing things in the studio at the moment yes. to rap about. And that's also like adding to the, you know, to this this new this new character who's, who's now every uh, Tuesday, or I think Wednesday nights. Yeah. This new character. Cypher sessions. Cypher sessions. Mm. He's, he's here every Wednesday and he's back. You know what I mean? So that's how I was also earning that reputation and, and building that name. So, I mean, guys like that, I'll never, ever forget them. I'll, yeah. I'll never, ever speak bad about them regardless mm. of how much time passes and I'll always be mindful of, of how they, you know, help me get to where I am because mm. I look at it as those stepping stones, those blocks, all added to now the building that we're sitting with. Yeah, you know? yeah, and you know, the the tall trees always catch the most wind. So it's always, I think, important for us to be observant of the the journey up to the top of the tree. Yeah, like you know who you passed mm. because. It's windy up there. When you fall off there, you must yeah. pass all those cats again. Indeed. So it's, I so mean, it's, Azul told me in 2014, he told me like, I'm not saying this to you because you, you're you not good at what you do, but I think at some point, and you might have reached it already, you're going to hit a glass ceiling here in Cape Town. So I think you might want to consider leaving sometime soon. Mm. And if you look at the 2015, I went to Joburg. Good for you. Because when he said that, I started paying attention to what was going on around me. And I was like, I think he's right. Like when I'm talking about clocking the levels. And you could have very comfortably just stayed. become yeah. extremely um, complacent here in Cape Town and run the Cape Town show. Yeah, but even that wasn't enough for me. And it's good. It wasn't enough. It's good like, that you were itching. Yeah, like I was looking for something more. I was like, if the game is clocked now and I reset it, I'm just going to clock it again. Mm. And it's going to be even easier now because now I know, know where everything. all the, the mm. line is, is. I know where all the villains is. <laughs> yeah. I know where all the pitfalls the is. The so cheats. now I'm just yeah. going to like do it with my eyes closed. But I need something bigger. I need to challenge myself. Yes. Also, I need to level up. Yes. You know what I mean? So yes. going to Joburg was actually a probably one of the best decisions I made in do my you, career. Do you, do you, did you freak them out in Joburg? Oh, yes. No, they were terrified. No. They were terrified. When I came there and I Because it wasn't... Ha, ba, da, da, ba, da, da. No. It was like full-on lyrical I, breakdown. Oh, when, What's I did, it, you know? when I did that song, Way It Go, mm. that, uh, that turned everything around, that changed a lot of people's perceptions of Capetonian rappers. Mm. It was also probably one of the first times I said... Uh, I'd said Kapsat Naya before that. Mm. But when I said it in that song, Kapsat Naya 2015, hanging at the taxi and having got teeth, wolf on Wall Street looking for the sheep, and sacrificed lambs, you think it was Eid. Mm. When people heard things, they'd never ever heard things like And they like don't know that, that cultural pa they practices. They didn't know they what don't they, know they it. thought. Okay, okay, the song is dope. Yeah. The entire song, not just my verse. Yes. I love the whole song. 
But that specific part for the rest of South Africa, they were introduced. Yeah, they were shook. To Cape Townian. Yes. Cape kind They were of forced to go and Google. They were <laughs> like, shit, I don't know who's this, who's this man. Yeah. I don't know half of what he's saying. Yeah. But this is refreshing. Yes. This is something different. And then yeah. from there, you see me with this one and that one and that one, this one. So, yeah. I mean, going to Joburg and exposing Cape Town there. You yeah. know, sometimes you have to take Cape Town out of Cape Town. Yes. You can't do it here. No, we are constantly. extremely bubbled here. Eh? Yeah, and yeah, it's, and, no, it's, and it's actually to our detriment and like it's bad for us that we are so like we're enclosed in this stupid little bubble mm. and, and it's, we just, it's to our disadvantage because yeah, yeah, everything's this happening is around us. Uh, Tumi made a nice example for me one day. He said, do you know why I think guys in Cape Town are so comfortable and complacent here? And I said, why? He said, because it's the end of the world. I said to me, I don't understand what you're saying, bro. He said, well, look that side, because we were sitting, I, I think we were sitting in town somewhere. He has a nice little place that he always stays by in town, like District 6. And he said, look there, there's the mountain. He said, mm. you can't go over the mountain. I said, yeah, that's true. He said, and look that side, there's the ocean. There's, you, you can't We're go on the tip. Foot. We're on the tip. Mm. It's the end of the world. Yeah, it's point. almost... Our environment is almost dictated that this is how far our thinking this can go. This is how far you can go. And mm. if you and if you look at it, it makes perfect yeah. sense because you cannot conquer a mountain that size as one man and you cannot swim across the ocean. But to me, it's also very like prophetic and profound and deep as well. I mean, the fact that this man is the one that took the liking to me first. Yes, and I remember that. That's crazy. And he almost allowed, because he's just got a lot of clout on that side as well. Yeah. So, um, I think that that was pretty impressive. And also, I think it's because you guys related on an Islamic level as well. And yeah, I think he too. respected the fact of how you were going about it. Yes. No, I mean, when, yeah, now bear in mind, when Tumi met me, I had 21 mixtapes. When he met me. Okay, when I met you, I think you were about like 15 out today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know so, what I mean? you know, it, it was already so like... really impressed him. Yeah. And, and, and you put the work in already. Yeah. You're not just here. Yes. For speaking bunches. So, he, he, he also saw that and he saw like, okay, I've never heard of him. But if he has 21 mixtapes, he can't be whack. Because mm. he has 21 mixtapes. So, by, Someone, by the 10th one, you yeah. had to have at least gotten some skill yeah. behind you at some point. So, I mean... He also saw that I wasn't here for a handout. I wasn't here to be carried by him. Yeah. You know? And then you obviously stirred something inside the cat when you started spitting. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we did, uh, we did where it go and that was also orchestrated mm. through him. You know, we sat one night. I, j I just come to Joburg. I was living in Eelboro. As I said, also sure, broke. That's rough. Yeah. Yeah. Very broke at, the, at that point. And um, I was looking... Was Jerry with you through it all? No, no, no. My uh, my previous partner was with me as well. He, unfortunately, you know, um, you know how things go. I mean... Yeah, no, it's part of the evolution. You unfortunately learn some things about people later on in life when, uh, when the success and the rewards come, you know? And uh, characters are tested, mm. as we spoke about earlier on. Mm. And not everyone passes the test, yes. you know? But I don't discredit him because... Without him, there were certain things that wouldn't have been achieved. Yes, I 100% hear you. you. Know? <coughs> Sorry, <coughs> it ties in again with the seasons. Yeah. And the purposes within that season. Yeah. So, so I hear you. So literally, for that seven years that he was a part of YGN, it took him only like three months to really, you know, destroy that. Because the... The, the lifestyle because then it swallowed. things started changing yeah. you know look here I, we're going, we can go on probably for very long and I know that you have to go eat biryani um, <laughs> so um, I remember the night that you opened up for Young uh, for Lil Wayne yes yes yo was that like look here I emceed for Kendrick Lamar, okay? Mm. And I um, went into his dressing room and like checked out the setup and the Moet was there and the Reese's Pieces and Oreos. Mm. Like they, 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 um, the riders, riders yeah. are like ridiculous. Yeah. But nevertheless, um, and then there's this idea that you're going to like hang out with them. And blah, mm. But you don't because like... No, I don't, no, you know you're, I mean? like a, you're like a lower tier. Yes, <laughs> and even like... Their tech sound technicians and stuff come and set your volume and yeah, set, yeah, yeah. No, you know all you those can't things. Can't be louder than them and your but sound can't be better. Would you? This is true. Yeah. And your pyrotechnics will also be balanced and yeah, everything. Yeah, Just yeah, actually sickening. Like you can't outdo them. Mm, you know? Even though you you local and the market actually would like way more fucks with you. Yeah. But anyway, um, what was like what that like was that was when Lil Wayne was on his 
most gevaarlijkste. Yes. I think uh, Lil Wayne played a very big role also in the mixtapes that I made because throughout my high school time, that was what we were listening to. Yes. He was actually dominating. And he had a shitload of mixtapes as well. Cha-ching. You know that. And that's where I got that the idea. That was magic that time. Yeah. Because the the thing that impressed us as teenagers about Lil Wayne is that every week you could say there was a new This song, is, a new mixtape. And it was mixtape. and it was almost like 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 you were part of the of the cult. Like yeah. you knew about it. You, you were in on it. it. Yeah. You, were, you know you were getting involved in it. And I remember when I met DJ Drama, he was the guy that actually you know presented. You met Drama. Yes, yes, yes. I actually got to to chill with him, and eventually we're gonna make a mixtape as well. I still Shoot. speak to him. He, he congratulated me on the album as well, and we spoke That's a little far. bit. And um, I mean, we chilled the night. And we was we were smoking some joints and shit. And I was telling him like, "Yo, my bro, like." So many of the uh, the mixtapes that you made, and I, I I was naming them mm. all, and I was saying like, yo, a lot of that influenced me to make my mixtapes because how he heard about me here was the mixtapes. Mm. He went to Good Hope and already he told me. Yes, that's why I say I will never yes. ever yeah. forget what these men have done to yeah. me. But nevertheless, but uh, I think they also like they boast about it, man, because that's what we can produce yeah. here. You know, what no, I mean, yeah. this is our little hero, <coughs> and he's our little you know flag bearer, mm. and torch bearer. So yes. He, he he basically told him like yo there's a guy yo who has 30 mixtapes and that immediately raised his antenna because mm. he comes from that mm. he built himself through that yeah. you know so he's like i have to meet this guy <coughs> it was probably also the start of the the masses must decide what they want to hear because for the longest time and i was aware of it mm. you have five or ten people in a radio station mm. Mm. that goes mm, that's not nice yeah, yeah that's nice so that, yeah. you know which is actually Such an injustice to the artist, because you spill your blood, sweat, and oh, tears, yeah. and your eyes into this song. And they listen to it for like one minute. And, and then, like, then your Next. mood is cut <laughs> today because someone like yeah. zapped you on the road, or whatever. And yeah. now the song is some cuck, you know. And the funny thing is that when I used to go to Joburg in the beginning, <coughs> like for it's sparkling now. Yeah, oh, it's sparkling. Like for the um, for the hustle. This before I went to go live there. This was just like weekend trips. Mm. I'd go to certain uh, to record labels, and I'd be waiting in the foyer, or I'd be waiting wherever they tell me to wait in an office or something for the person I was coming to see. And you wait like 30 minutes before the person comes in. That and sure. I'd be sitting there and I'd look at the displays or whatever mm. they, they had in their office, and there'd be a pile of CDs like that I and that's uh, and then I'd see my office, I'd be like, so is this the the demos that you get given? He said, no, 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 this is the demos I got given today. And there's hopes and dreams, eh? People have expectations. Someone's gonna phone them back. I'd look at, I'd even pick them up, and I'd be like, "Yo, oh, this cover is better than mine." Yes. You are this person's pr- production. Because that looks that person than mine. went to go and find <coughs> money to make that shit work. Yo. And it's, it's painful, eh? And I remember asking the guy, I was like, "So when do you have time to listen to this?" He's like, "Oh no, I don't." So I said, "So what does that mean? You don't listen to it?" He says, "No, I don't listen to it." And that used to like. It used to bug me out because I'd be sitting there and he'd take my CD and he'd listen to it. And I'm like, so is it just because I spoke to the right yeah. guy that I managed to you get him to listen to? I'm, yeah, I'm like, so what makes me better than them? Mm. Like, like, I don't know, there could be some guy in there who's better than me. Yeah. And we're never going to know about him. Yeah. You know, so that always bothered me when I used to do that. And the mixtapes uh, saved me because I didn't have to... Like have that dictation. Yes, you kind of built your 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 credibility before Indeed. it was needed for you to build it. Yes, you know. Yes, you already got the clout before you stepped into the room because you did all the hard work. Um, and I suppose that comes as as we say, mm. like you, we lay down the foundation mm. before we have to start um proving ourselves. We Experience already did it. Also, there's no substitute for that, you know. People sit in offices and boardrooms all day reading in theory mm. what it's like to do certain things. And then there's a guy who's actually been doing it who's never actually read the textbook. You know? He's never ever opened it. But he's, it. he's probably got his PhD he's qualification in it. He's brilliant at it. He's yeah. an expert at this level. You now, know? check here. Closing off now. Brilliant at it. Are you going to do a young closing off rhyme for us? Or are you not allowed to do it in the fast? I don't know. Don't put me on the spot like this. What's look the last here. question that you have? Yeah, you said there was one more that you were saving. Oh, is that the thing? That was, was spit a verse for us. Do you mind picking your password in here? Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Now I told everyone, you better change it after this. Can you please watching. the show?
Okay, here we go. Can you freestyle for the show about the MVP club? MVP club. So, the MVP club, um, I want you to do a quick one minute. Maybe you can push it to two. Just about... I'll do one minute. <laughs> I'll do one minute. <laughs> I'll do one minute. Okay, cool. <coughs> about MVP. MVP club. Right. Okay. Do you want me to beatbox? Will you? No. <laughs> uh, you know beatbox is in the house here? No? You smoked at the beatbox then? I some, do a simple one like okay, let me just sing. Okay, here we go. What my diaphragm is like, fuck. Just clap. Okay. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, now you know that each one teach one. As I pull up to interviews in V dubs, this is the MVP. No, man, I'm cack here. No, man, because I'm too busy listening to your lap, man. Okay, I'm gonna just clap. Okay, okay, I'm gonna okay. clap. Okay, here we go. Hey, 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 go. Yeah. Hey, hey, go. Now you know what's youngster CPT. And when uh. it comes to playing the game, I'm the MVP. Yes, uh. yes indeed, we do it each day. Uh. Salute to the DJ. Hey. Her name is TK. Hey. Yeah, yeah. Yes, indeed. No haters. We have to give salute to the candlestick makers. <laughs> yes! <laughs> even the bakers, the ones that cook, even the ones out there who's watching this duck. <laughs> <laughs> but my bro, I cannot be Sam, because right now this is the month of Ramadan. <laughs> I'm just looking for the full man, but I promise that we can smoke one next month. <laughs> Oh, yes, indeed. They're recording me. I bust freestyles here with no authority. And yes, indeed, we are at SAE, but this one is dedicated to MVP. Yes. And can we just say that that is not Rias? Uh, yes, indeed. That is freestyle. <laughs> that is that is how I learned how to rap. And I encourage all MCs, rappers out there watching this to never, never stop freestyling. Mm. Always, always make sure you do that. It's like a soccer player just practicing in yeah. the field with yeah. no one watching, with no pressure on him. That's what it's supposed to be like. That's like the fun side of it where you see what you can come up with. And mm. even in that moment, sometimes you come up with something better than what you would ever. I saw you almost surprise yourself. I surprise <laughs> myself with the shit yeah. I say. I do it every show. Yes. And I surprise myself. I'm like, yo, yeah. how did I rhyme that with that? Yes. Or how did I see that? And managed to rhyme that in the same. So no, but then you know you're a real one, man. Hey. You're a real one. There's no ghost writing here. Salute. <laughs> no, no, no. Thank you so very much. Give me some skin. I have so much respect you for you, and me. I really appreciate you coming out here during this period. Shout out and to you. Yeah. Shout out to motherhood as well. Congrats on that. Let me tell you, it Shout is out a to marvelous time. Too. He's a good man. I remember Ooh. meeting you guys way, way back. 2011 sometime. I yeah. actually came there with Blake. Do you remember Blake was Look, with yeah, me? I remember you guys were like 15. There was a moose. Like a yeah, and I was like, yo, this are these kids nowadays. Yeah, knock yeah, out. yeah. There was a moose. Yeah, a lot of us. but and you I'm, guys. I'm very proud of the fact that we've all managed to like yes. achieve success. In your little in respective niches. Nah. You know I mean? so One time it's doing a stroke.